Let's take a look uh, at some uh, Austrian papers today. Die Presse, as you can imagine, this is a huge story. Uh, you can see the press here, one word, adieu, goodbye. Now, Feynman says he's stepping down after losing the support of his Social Democratic Party. Uh, Der Standard, another Austrian paper, shows a photo of him uh, as a simple party member uh, after his resignation. Now, uh, Der Standard uh, reminds readers that last month his party, the Social Democratic Party, suffered a stinging defeat in the first round of uh, presidential elections in which the anti-immigration Freedom Party did very well. And a lot of people are saying that uh, Feynman lost the support of his own party uh, because he, well, they accuse him essentially of caving in to right-wing populist demands by building fences on the country's border and, and essentially giving in to this right-wing rhetoric. An analyst saying that Feynman is um, really the latest casualty in this political upheaval that seems to be going on uh, right across uh, parts of Europe. That's right. Lots of papers are saying that he's a victim of this refugee crisis. Interesting analysis if we take a look at the editorial in their standard, which says, look, the refugee problem is important, but that's not the real issue here. Uh, according to this editorial, Feynman's major weakness was his economic policy, Austria's most urgent problem problem today is not the refugee crisis, but unemployment and the struggling economy. That being said, though, the refugee crisis certainly is an issue that's getting a lot of attention in Austria, but in other parts of Europe as well. A very interesting piece today in La Croix, the, the Catholic paper here in France, which focuses on the plight of young refugees. Now, La Croix reminds readers that nearly a third of the one million refugees who arrived in Europe last year are minors, so under 18 years old, and they try to describe exile from a child's perspective. It's really a heartbreaking uh, story here in La Croix. Uh, this, this experience of exile can be particularly traumatic for children, and particularly children traveling alone, because many of these refugees are traveling alone, and without supervision, uh, adult supervision, they have a hard time dealing with uh, their plight. Let's move on to something different. I'm going to take you to the States uh, now. Papers there are focusing on a legal battle. This is between uh, the U.S. Justice Department and the state of North Carolina. That's right, my home state, North Carolina. Let's take <laughs> a look at uh, Politico, which is taking a look at this legal battle here. Now, yesterday, the state of North Carolina and the federal government exchanged lawsuits. Lots of papers are calling them dueling lawsuits over what's known as the bathroom bill. Now, in March, a North Carolina politician pushed through uh, what's something called House Bill 2, HB2, that's what it's being called. Uh, now, the main issue in this bill is that it allows people, well, it says people can only use public toilets matching their biological gender on their birth certificate. So essentially, uh, the uh, federal government says that this is discriminatory against transgendered people, while the North Carolina uh, state says that the uh, essentially the Justice Department, so the federal Justice Department, is overreaching uh, their authority. You can read more about it in the Washington Post as well, which you can see talks about these dueling lawsuits. Now, this so-called bathroom bill has been really in the spotlight for quite some time now. It's uh, faced intense criticism from businesses and civil rights activists, and several musicians like Bruce Springsteen and Brian Adams actually canceled gigs in North Carolina to boycott the state. And several businesses as well have said they're going to boycott the state of North Carolina so long as this law is in place. And lots of pokers, uh, papers rather are focusing uh, on Attorney General Loretta Lynch. Now, she's compared the House Bill 2 to the post-slavery Jim Crow laws, which uh, legalized segregation in the South. That's right. And that comparison is particularly biting coming from a Loretta Lynch because she is African-American and she's actually from the state of North Carolina. Uh, very interesting piece here in Slate, which comes back on comments that she made yesterday at a press conference. She said, this bill is a great, is about much more than just bathrooms. It's actually, uh, this whole bathroom bill has become the epicenter of a larger fight over transgendered rights. And you can see here Slate saying that Loretta Lynch just became the world's most powerful advocate for trans rights. Uh, and Slate says that her press conference yesterday was kind of like the I have a dream moment for the trans movement. So uh, the interesting analysis in Slate. But if we take a look at the local papers in North Carolina, it's interesting as well because they're looking at what this means for the state itself and particularly for the governor of North Carolina, Pat McCroy. You can see in a lot of ways this has a lot more to do than just bathrooms for him as well. This is There's a lot of political stuff going on here. Their risks and their rewards here. Uh, now, according to the Charlotte Observer here, the, the rewards are that he can attract a lot of conservative votes, but the risk is that the state of North Carolina could lose a lot of public funding.
Okay, final story from Flo. We're going to end uh, with a story um, about space for you. That's right, the planet Mercury is all over the papers today. Let's take a look at some impressive photos here on the front page of the Wall Street Journal. The smallest planet made a big move yesterday for the first time uh, it uh, pat well first time in years it passed between the earth and the sun mercury rising on the front page of the guardian today uh, the event took about eight hours uh, it happens 13 times in a century lots of papers are geeking out today uh, so if you missed it this time the next time it'll happen is in november 2019 then november 2032 and finally well the third time uh, is may of 2049 i wonder if we'll still be around then. i hope so i hope so <laughs> Thanks a lot, Flo, with some uh, analysis of the papers for you here on France 24.